God is good. Oh, come on now. Come on now. God is good. You ain't doing it for me. You're doing it for the one. The one and only one. Lord Jesus Christ who is standing here in his beloved church. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ who is the center, our foundation. Lord Jesus Christ who is standing right there. So one more time, beloved family, and say it like you mean it. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, um, this is something that uh, is, is uh, really special to not only me but to many of us. Um, this is something that has been in the making for, for years. And by the grace of God, by his timing, by his mercy, it's going to manifest tonight before your eyes. Amen. Amen. And I am, I, am, I am in awe. I am excited. I am no longer going to take too much time introducing him. But tonight, we have a special evangelist that's going to speak to you. And he is anointed of God, Holy Spirit fire. He's our very own. Welcome him, Brother Todd Elder. Hallelujah. <laughs> he said I built it up too much, Pastor. <laughs> It's all Holy Spirit. It's all Holy Spirit. This is all new. It is Holy Spirit. It's all, I, I, that's that's the reason I'm not I'm not uh, well I'm here. That's the reason I'm here. I, I, first and foremost, I am a child of God. I've served my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I've been saved through His blood, Amen. and and I am His servant. My, my my title is servant. My title is servant of Almighty God. I'm just happy to be here. I, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I really am. I'm gonna start out with the with a little prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, Lord. I just ask you to open us all up. Open our ears, open our eyes to whatever word it is that you have us to receive tonight, Lord, that we receive it with thanksgiving. The Bible says all things are good when received with thanksgiving. So, Lord, we just receive it right now with thanksgiving. We thank you for this night, this time together, in time of worship and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, uh, anyway, like I said, just bear with me because I'm new at this. And... Uh, Pray like, like, like what I'm thinking. So. <laughs> anyway, we're going to start out in Galatians because, you know, the, the power is in the Word. It ain't, it ain't nobody but Jesus. Hallelujah. Galatians 5, 13, 16 says, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour on one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Praise God, praise Amen. God, praise God. I'm going to read up here. I, I, I have another verse. I, I, King James, this, this, is, this has come out of a different Bible in, in the National Version or whatever. But anyway, it's all, it's all. Holy Spirit inspired prophetic word of God is what I what I come from today. But anyway, this one says you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. This says called unto liberty. Same thing. But I, I'm a layman. <laughs> you, you got you got I, you got to understand that I don't understand what that means when we've been called into liberty. Uh, that's why I got to go to this other one. It tells me I've been called to freedom. Uh, but but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. I like this verse better. It fits me better. I'm sorry. I'm just. But anyway, I'm, take it whichever way you get it. You know what I'm saying? So, praise be to God. But uh, anyway, I, I, you know we, we all have things come against us. Um, I was sharing with Brother Joy this past week. I'm, I'm I'm riding to do a job in Willisburg, and and I hit Springfield, and I and I, and I turned the curve, and 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 uh, I got to I got to confess because I forget it. Pretty young lady walking down the street. Caught my eye. Now listen, I love beauty. I love beauty. I don't. I don't lust it out for it anymore because that's that, that God is dead. At the same time, it, 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 Satan knew I was going to be here tonight, so you know he, he's trying to weasel his way back in. So I looked at her and I seen her and I said, "Well, she's pretty." And I said, "And Lord, and she's your daughter. So you go on and bless her oh, while I go on to my job and get Amen. what I need to get done for you." Start to, get, now, start to get feel chills. 
praise God. See, it's amazing how God just brings it all together at the time. Uh, anyway, that, that's just one of the many things that we, we battle every day. I mean, you know, uh, lust, lust covers everything. It ain't just flesh. It ain't, it, it's things, carnal things. So anyway, like I said, we're called to be free. So let's be free in Jesus. Let's be free in Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it has been a long road, Joey. I, I, God, I, I got the right, put some scriptures down and praying this afternoon. And, and uh, God said, uh, he said, testify and witness. And uh, so, so that's what I got to do. I got to tell you all about my story and, 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 and where God brought me from. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Jesus Christ and his blood and Holy Spirit Amen. anointing. I, I wouldn't be here. And I know this because my mama told me two weeks before God delivered me from crack cocaine, she said, uh, she said you, you'll be dead in a couple weeks. Uh, anyway, uh, I was, I'm, I'm uh, the youngest of five. We're all five years apart. My mom, I'm going to go back to the beginning. My mom, when I was born in 1967, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, we're all two years apart. Uh, three of us birthdays in, in May, mine's in June, and my sister's in March. So within four months, there's five of us that was born within four months of a year in, in, in eight years. Ten, in ten, uh, eight years. Anyway, I, I, as I got older, I'm like, Dad, what is up? How, you can't plan to have five kids within two or three months of each other and have it work out like that. He said it was Harden Creek water. He said they went down to Harden Creek every couple, over a couple of years. <laughs> But anyway, it's it's divine. It's just divine. You know what I'm saying? But but anyway, praise God. Uh, anyway, I, you know, I, I didn't have a bad upbringing uh, as far as that, that goes. I, I don't consider I did. At the same time, my mom and dad was an alcoholic. Uh, um, gambling. You know, at the time I got to 10 or 12 years old, I was going to my family member's houses, either grandma and granddaddies, aunts and uncles. They were coming to our house. But they, they drank, played poker, smoked. I had a good time. It was Friday night, Saturday night. Saturday morning, there wasn't no fun being had. There, there, there wouldn't have no fun. So, you know, at an early age, I, I related having fun with smoking and drinking and, and, and gambling. So, you know, so I, anyway, it, it kind of started me off on the wrong foot. But, but I was good at that, too. <laughs> Back in the day, I was good at that. Anyway, being, being a heathen, uh, because that's what I was taught. We do what we're taught. You know, and, and that's why Holy Spirit's here today to teach us different. Amen. Uh, he's here to teach us how he would have us live. So that, that's why I'm here. I'm, I'm here for Jesus. I love Jesus more than anything. I want y'all to know that. Amen. I love Jesus more than anything. Amen. She's number two. Right. She's number two. And then from there on, it's kids and rest of the world. Uh, at, <laughs> at the same time, uh, like I said, youngster five, grew up in and out of the bars. Let me, let, me, let me come back here. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'll be all over the place. I'm new at this. Uh, in and out of the bars. But, but before that even started, uh, I started drinking when I was 13. A year before that, uh, I, was, uh, I attended St. Charles uh, Junior High, and we went to church once a week, if not twice a week, during school to go down there. Well, the priest caught me, and a, and a buddy of mine smoking a cigarette behind the building. And uh, I'm going to tell you what he told me. Live from hell. He said, you're going to hell for that. God's going to punish you for that. And he turned around and walked away. I'm just saying, that, that's how I started. That, that's where I started. That's where, that's where I, the old Todd that's dead now started on his way to heathenism and, and, and just recklessness. Anyway, today I would like to see that priest uh, and, and inform him that that was a lie straight from hell. Amen. That Jesus Christ loves me. Amen. And he's not a punishing God. He's a loving God that forgives me. Mm, I love him because he loved me first. Amen. He created me. Praise God. We, <laughs> did you know that we were spirit before we were formed in the womb? We were with God before we were even formed in the womb. So who's am I? Who's am I? I belong to God. Through Christ Jesus. It wasn't for Jesus being in this flesh. I couldn't have been saved. It wasn't for his blood shed. At the same time, uh, let me think here for a minute. Like I said, y'all pray while I while I while I pray. <laughs> uh, as time went on, got married, uh, had a couple kids. Life was turmoil, struggle, torment. You know, uh, did what I had to do. I worked, paid paid to provide. Uh, uh, 
got divorced 21 years after we were together. We were, we were together eight years before I even got married. You know, because that, that's, that's how unsure I was of me. I don't know, but sure, I sure want to do this. So, you know, and anyway, uh, I'm not speaking divorce or any of that. I, I, I'm going to speak from my heart and what the Holy Spirit's telling me is that my first marriage wasn't of God. I just want y'all to know that my first marriage wasn't of God. I understand that. My, my first wife is one of my best friends today. I would, this, this is, is one of the best mothers I've known in my life. I still would not rather her be my children's mother over their mother. I, I'm just, that's just where I'm at. But anyway, I had, I had to throw that out there, uh, just get it out of the way. Uh, I'm remarried, uh, March 2007. <laughs> like that. March of 2007, you know, it, it's just a difference in, in the way, it's a difference in having life and not having life. My first wedding, we had seven people, groomsmen, and seven bridesmaids, right? Look what happened. Oh, put on a big show, though. Put on a big show, you know, but, uh, and at the same time, that came to an end because Jesus wasn't nowhere in it. Uh, after I got divorced in 2004, uh, I was in the uh, tack room of a horse barn where I'd been living for a year, smoking crack, uh, doing work to, to pay for what I was getting from them, food and, and, and dope. And uh, I didn't have a vehicle. Uh, I was, uh, I don't know, 34, 35 years old, 36 maybe. I, I don't can't remember. But anyway, 04, I got divorced. Shannon had brought the kids to this tack room that I, that I had been living in for six or eight months. And, uh, and my son, five years old, get jumped out of the van. He said, uh, he said, Daddy, where's your house at? Where you live at? And, uh, you know, and that right there, boy, it's just like a dagger to the heart. I'm like, you know, I got to tell my son I live in a barn. It was a nice tack room and all that, but it was a barn. I lived in a barn. I ain't, you know, thinking back, I can't, Jesus was born in a barn. But at the same time, I wasn't there for the same reason he was there for. You know what I'm saying? I was there for me, and he was he was there for us. He was there for us. Anyway, uh, my my little boy got out of that, that van. He said, "Dad, where's your house?" Said, well, you know. Anyway, that that that's what started the the turning point in my life, uh, and that was God. That was God, you know, hitting me right there with my son, having to tell him I was living in a barn. Uh, at the same time, thank God I had a barn to live in. I, you know. Thank God for preventative grace. Oh, my Jesus, thank you for preventative. Preventative grace keeps you from passing on and going to hell before you get to come to know Jesus. That's what preventative grace does. It, it, you know what I'm saying? But uh, anyway, thank God for preventative grace. Uh, going through, after I got divorced, after I got I got clean, uh, March 8th of 2005, uh, couldn't live the way I was living anymore, y'all. It was hurting me that I was hurting the people that loved me. I didn't ask God to help me. I done done that for 12 years through treatment centers. God, take my heart, stop me. I'll be the head and shoulders. As soon as he did his part, I broke my promise. So after however long it took, 12 years, I, I, uh, I hit my knees March the 8th and, and, and uh, May the 8th, and I, I asked him to let me go. I said, God, I know I'm going to bust the gates of hell wide open, but I would rather do that than continue hurting the people that love me another day. And I woke up the next morning, and joy was there. Amen. Sorrow comes in the night, and joy comes in the morning. Yeah. I'm just saying that that May the 9th, um, I, I woke up that morning, and, and I did not have a desire to do any of that anymore. Uh, and I knew what to do as far as AA and NA. I've done been to three treatment centers in 12 years and, and could probably counsel one. Okay, but anyway, uh, uh, that, that morning I got up, I felt different. So I started, I, I went back to AA and NA. And uh, I started looking for different things, though. I, I'd always look for things that, you know, make me feel better about me. Uh, and then, uh, but. And I don't know if I was saved on May the 8th of 2005 or if it was in September when I went on my walk 
Either way, God came into my life May the 8th and took away the desire to destroy myself. So, but anyway, with that being said, with that being said, uh, it wasn't until after September, okay, the, uh, AANA, I was doing three three meetings a day for a year. Uh, you know, I, I, I just did it because that's how much I didn't want to go back to the way I was living. Uh, and God had removed the desire, so I'm like, it was easy. He, he made it easy, the transition easy. Listen, the pain to change has to be less than the pain to remain the same or you're not going to change. I'm just saying, I, I, but I, I had had enough pain. Uh, and uh, like I said, I didn't ask God to help me that time. I asked him to let me go. Uh, but that's how much he loved me. He's like, nah, I ain't going to let you go. I need you. He, he needs me uh, to be his child. It's what he created me for, for a relationship with Jesus. Uh, anyway, fast forward on through here. Uh, that was May the 8th. A A and N A. Notice these people that were going through turmoils and tribulations and uh, torment, and but th there was a select few in there every day that that you couldn't you couldn't smack the smile off their face. That were going through the same things that we were all we all go through, but yet they they had peace and and and, and contentment and, and joy. And I'm like, that's what I'm. That's what I want. That's what I want. Uh, God rest his soul, Donnie Green. Uh, Offered to sponsor me on an Amaz walk, and uh, that—that's where I got saved. I got it, can't really say I got saved May the eighth or September the tenth. I don't know which one it was. That's doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I, I, doesn't matter. I got I got delivered the the May and got saved the tenth. We'll, we'll go we'll go with that, right? We'll, we'll just we'll just say that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I'd gotten saved. Uh, I was still, I was still lusting. Uh, I, I, God had taken a lot of things out of my life that occupied all of my time, all of my time, twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week. I was looking to get high. If I wasn't working to make the money, I was going to get the stuff. Either way it goes. I, whoo! Thank you, Jesus. I ain't got to run no more. So, uh, September was on the walk. And uh, and uh, I cried out, and and uh, and I received Jesus Christ. I received Holy Spirit that day. Uh, after that, uh, I'm trying to minister with with the mentor I had, and uh, was ministering. I wasn't trying. He I, I, he was mentoring me to to preach, bring me into preaching, which is my calling. And I answered that 13, 14 years ago. And my wife, she says, "You preach every day," and I'm like. Don't know if that's what he meant or if he went, you know what I'm saying. I don't know. Is, is it one-on-one? -on -one? Because I do that every day, all day, by the grace of God, through Holy Spirit anointing. I don't do it. He does it through me, uh, and, I'm, and I'm grateful for that. At the same time, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I know that I'm supposed to be here right now because uh, my spirit wouldn't let me not be here. And, and I've done that before, too. Yes, I'll be glad to. And no, I ain't going to make it. I don't, you know. Uh, but that was me. That that wasn't Holy Spirit. That was me trying to get out of something that I was uncomfortable doing. I'm uncomfortable, people. Let me tell you, I'm uncomfortable up here right now. I am, I, I am who I am, child of God. I'm up here for Him. Hallelujah. All I can say is deal with it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry. If, if if you got any hate mail, send it to Pastor John, Pastor Joy, somebody else, I, or take it up with God. I, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Either way, uh, I got to get on through here. After I got saved, uh, I had a lustful spirit that came over me. Uh, it's embarrassing to say this. I was in six relationships in a year and a half. And three of us had moved in with each other in that year and a half. Uh, and, and the sixth one, <laughs> God got tired. He pulled the, pulled the rope. He said, that, stop. That's what he said. <laughs> He didn't say it like that because it's small, still voice. But at the same time, that small, still voice can get your attention real quick if, you, if you're living in spirit. Uh, he said, stop. And, uh, and I did. I went to my knees and I repented. And I asked God, oh, be specific in your prayers, but make sure that that's what you really desire. Because you're liable to get it. Uh, I got more than I asked for. I, I, asked, I asked for a, a young, beautiful woman. 
that knew him like I did and could receive the love that I had to give and could love me in the same manner. I asked for silver, really, and I got gold. She's sitting right there. That's a, that's a daughter of God right there. I don't care what nobody says. She don't talk near as much as I do, but she's, but she's just as close, if not closer, to the Lord than I am. And I am grateful for that. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, uh, like I said, after 16 years of marriage, I just can't say enough about my Lord and Savior, man. He loves me, and he just wants, he just wants to do for me. He want that, that he done got, I, all I want to do is do for him. If you want good, do good. Uh, if you want to be blessed, serve the blesser. Serve the blesser, that's all I can say. We're going to roll on. I'm, I'm, uh, like I said, he told me to give, me, give some testimony, and that's some of my testimony. I ain't going into detail, uh, but maybe another night. Maybe, maybe, maybe over the next rest of my life preaching, It'll come out in time. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's go on to Romans here. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Thank you, God, for hope. Thank you that I can hope in you. Because uh, that, that's where I was at in, in Tycoon, that horse barn. I had reached the point of complete and utter hopelessness. There was no hope. I had depleted all my resources. Nobody wanted anything to have to do with me. Not even if I was crying out for help. If it's sincerely, except my mother. My mother knew. My mother knew. My mother knew. When I came to my mother after after that day that I woke up and and and, and God had delivered me from it, I went to my mother, and uh, she looked at me in the eyes and she cried. She says, "Finally, some truth." She said, you lied to me every time you walk in the door. From the time you walk in the door to the time you walk out, she said, she said, I can feel it. She said, I can feel it. They helped me. They helped me. They let me move back in with them, uh, go to work, you know, get, do all the things we do, as we're supposed to do, you know, as, as responsible human beings, you know. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I was at the, I was hopeless, hopeless, didn't have any hope at all. Like I said, I asked God to let me go. I had even lost hope in that. I asked God to let me go because I'm like, I mean, I, I've done lied to you more than I've lied to anybody. So, I mean, why, why would God still be interested in me? Uh, now, I know because he loves me and his son died for me. Hallelujah. And he sent the Holy Spirit so I could live in it. So, praise be to God. And, uh, and, and for this other scripture on mine, it says, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Might have hope. Might have hope. So uh, praise God. We're going to roll on here a little bit more. Because we, 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 I just can praise God. Job might be one of my favorites. Might be one of my favorites. Could you imagine losing everything? Everything, even your children. Even your children. Losing everything. Your wife cussing you, saying you ought to be cursing God. You ought to be cursing God. Why aren't you cursing God? Whoo! Anyway, Job says, acquaint yourself with him now and be at peace. Thereby good shall come to you. Whoo! Praise God. That man was strong in his faith. Mm, mm, mm. Didn't give up on God and God didn't give up on him. He replenished him ten, hundredfold what he had that he had lost before. Amen. So praise God. I, I, I admire Job a lot. I have a lot of admiration for him. I really do. Uh, need to go on here. Each and everybody here is pretty much hooked up with the Lord. If, if, if you know, uh, the Bible says everybody ain't. Says everybody ain't. So uh, I, I've got to got to come out with this. I, I was going going through some uh, some readings today and and uh, run across this question: Is the Bible true? You know, I said, that's a good question. I've never had any uh, literature or anything speaking of the Bible. Never read it. Like I said, I, I'm, anyway, I, I got to reading up a little bit. And uh, yes, it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's, it, it, it's been documented, copies, manuscripts throughout history. Copies show that the Bible has been transmitted accurately. And, and trust me, uh, despite... Common skeptical claims that the Bible has often been changed through the centuries. The physical evidence, the truth, as that is, is, is true. 
preach the true word of God. The only Holy Spirit inspired prophetic word of God. So I, I should have started with that and got that out of the way. Uh, but anyway, I, like I said, I love Jesus. Thank God that I'm here. Uh, I, I hope the Holy Spirit falls on this place. I know he is. He's falling on it. Whether we receive it or not, it's up to you. So, so open your heart. Open your mind. Uh, we, 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 need, we need to separate carnal from spiritual. Uh, we have to have this to do that. We have to have this to do this. We have to know, we, we have to believe, mm, we have to believe that Jesus Christ, Leo, went to the cross, died, shed his blood so that we could, so that we could live, so that we could be saved through that blood, through his actions. Nothing we did. We didn't ask to be condemned. We were born that way, and that came into the world through Adam. Sin entered the world through Adam. We're responsible for those that we're responsible for. Those. So it says we were condemned when we, when we were born. We, we were born. Jesus didn't come to condemn. He came to give life and more abundant. So anyway, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Joey, I'm sorry, but that's about all I, I can do right now. I, I, I mean, I'm going to. I could sit up here all night and tell you testimonies of things he's done in my life. I never apologize, man. That was absolutely perfect. How many of you agree that's good or good? God, God, amen. Oh, my goodness hey no hey, you, you always be tore up <laughs> amen always be tore up from the floor up amen right mama k always be tore up from the floor up because that's how holy spirit flows hallelujah so glory be to god uh brother todd brought these scriptures and what holy spirit has given him and um here in my heart family i cannot improve on perfection amen I cannot touch that perfection in what Holy Spirit has, has demonstrated through our beloved brother. Amen. It was absolutely perfect. Hallelujah. And um, in, in, in my obedience, in our obedience, Pastor and I, we, we, we do our best as far as to try to encourage and love you and set you up to succeed. Amen. And what I mean by that is what your calling is, share it with us. Because... We're going to come along beside you, pray for you, and, and hear my heart. We will let you know. And um, I am so grateful for your obedience, brother, because I know the fight that you fought to get here. And all of us as one man, we're eternally grateful. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. <laughs> and, and, and to see your beloved son right there, praise God. Man, brother, if that's the way to get you to church, I'm going to have him preach all the time, man. <laughs> I miss you, bro. <laughs> I love you. It's good to see you. Um, so, believe it or not, I know you believe me when I say this. I was actually preparing myself because Holy Spirit said, get ready, because he's going to conclude. And in my mind, I'm like, no, I know this, brother. We spent hours here alone. And when we meet, we set up a chair for Lord Jesus and we sit, we sit here sometimes for hours, um, and we just worship together. And we get in our face, and we pray. And um, our beloved brother has helped me through some many dark times. And uh, what's so awesome is that many of you have never heard of Todd Elder. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see him, and you'll see, you know, normally they, they kick it back here, right, on the east side. Right? They kick it on the east side, right? But, um, but I'm grateful for this new season, right, Pastor, that... There's many of us that are stepping out, being obedient. We know that the time is, is soon, that Lord Jesus is coming. And um, it's not about, hear my heart, was there anything about that message that gave Todd glory or was it all for Lord Jesus? Amen. And that's where it's at. Praise God. That's Holy Spirit's church and how we worship Lord Jesus. We don't touch the glory. We just want to we just wanna be obedient and speak his goodness. His power, his perfection, and his love, amen, that he has for us, amen. But this is what Holy Spirit wanted us to, to just um, highlight before we um, play our songs and um, get up here at the altar and 
and praise God and do what we do best. Amen. Amen. Three people. Okay. I know. You're one of the three, babe. Don't get crunchy on me, okay? You're one of the three. All right, so check this out. I'm just going to read the whole thing. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, as, as Brother Todd said, freedom. Only, you, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Don't use this freedom in Holy Spirit to satisfy your flesh. Don't use this freedom in God as a grace card. Come on, somebody. This is what's being preached and taught now. In re Seriously, we have cults that label themselves blah, 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 Christian church. And it's okay for same sex to sleep with same sex and to do things that the Bible clearly says you will not be in the kingdom of God. But how can you tell me? Right? How can you tell me and make it okay? It's not okay. And this is, what, this is what's happening right here in this church in Galatia. This, this strong rebuke is coming out saying, listen, you are free through the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. You have the power and authority to take every thought captive that tries to perverse your mind. As our beloved displayed just earlier today, the devil, the tempter, tried to tempt him. And immediately he knew because Holy Spirit said, you know what you're looking at. Yes, that's your beloved daughter. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father God. Amen. And that's how you capture these thoughts and you submit it to Christ and you say, Daddy, kill it. Amen. Kill it. Hallelujah. Now, sometimes we use things as a yo-yo. Y'all know what a yo-yo is? Right? Right? Walk the dog. Right? Sometimes we yo-yo with God. We say we're going to leave it at the altar, but there's a string attached. And we act like God don't know that there's a string attached. And I'm going to tell you, if you got a string attached, Father's like, I don't, I don't receive that. I'm not going to be your backup plan. He's our only plan. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. He's our only plan. Amen. So Christ made us free in this liberty, but the rebuke is, don't you dare use Christ as a crutch to sin. Don't you dare use his name or don't, don't you dare use grace as a grace card. Oh, well, I'm forgiven of all my sins, so I can just do whatever I want. That's a bunch of doo-doo. Right? Say it with me. Don't do it. But by love, say it with me, love, serve one another. Hallelujah. Serve one another. Amen. For all the laws fulfilled in, say this with me together, beloved church family, one word. So, who is the word of God? Does the, does the, does, does the book of John not say so in John 1.1? 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. Amen. And don't you love it? How here it is. Simple. Clear. That listen, you don't have 613 commandments to live by. Guess what? It ain't for you. It wasn't for the Lebanites here in Kentucky, right? It wasn't, it wasn't for the Gentiles, amen? It wasn't for the Hawaiians. It wasn't for us. Say it with me. It wasn't for me. But, oh my goodness, but God in this one word. Put up your finger, one. Hallelujah. Listen, in Jesus' name, you're putting up this number one, and listen, it's powerful. Because you know what, when we do this, Brother Brandon, it's like I'm telling you, I'm number one. But see, our hearts, all of heaven right now, sees what you're doing, beloved child of God. And you're going, Lord Jesus Christ, you are number one. And it's because you're number one that your spirit, hallelujah, lives inside of me. Amen. Say it with me, I am number one. And that's what God is saying, that in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right away, he goes into the only commandments. Love God with everything you got and love one another. Right? Love one another. Do you love one another? I see a lot of heads nodding. Are you ready for a rabbit to get up on your lap? Do you love yourself? Do you love yourself? Because, see, if you struggle with that, you don't love others. Love thy neighbor 
as thyself. But yet I wonder why I don't receive the blessings of the Lord. See, God wants you to love him first. And when you get so intimate with the Lord, guess what? You're going to love yourself. Because you're going to realize, as our beloved said, Holy Spirit said it through you, brother. We were in the spirit with God before we were even spoken in our mother's womb. Don't you love it when daddy God says, before I formed you, I knew you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I'll tell you right now. What a graceful God to go ahead and make me after the way. I, I, mm. Brother Todd and I, we share that a lot. Hallelujah. We, we have to just stop sharing old stories because that's dead and gone. Amen. There's a lot of us that do that. Praise God. And then check this out. But if ye bite and devour one another. How many of you have seen that happen? Right? In emotion. In being offended. I'm just going to lash out. Listen, family. I've seen it so much. I've, I've seen such a rise in the past three weeks. It's crazy. But guess what? It's contractions. It's contractions. It's the birthing pains. Amen. Demons are restless. So guess what? If you don't want to repent and get right with God Almighty, you're going to live a pitiful, horrible life because you're going to be arguing and being disobedient with God and all these devils and demons are going to torment your mind and try to control your body and now you're just going to be lashing out at everybody and next thing you know, uh, ain't no church good enough. I'm just going to stay at home. And that's exactly what the devil wants. For you to stay home with your pity so that you can marinate in it. And I pray that we can just come to moments like this in this stillness of what God did for us. And it's at the forefront of our mind. And that I cannot devour you. I cannot cuss you. I cannot be angry at you. It doesn't matter, Brother David, if you did something wrong to me, whether it's intentional or accident. If I truly serve who I serve, all you're going to get from me is love. All you're going to get from me is encouragement. All you're going to get from me is a hug, a kiss. And God bless you. Amen. I pray that we all tonight allow Holy Spirit to convict us. Allow Holy Spirit to flow in us. I pray that we take what Brother Todd just, oh, he spilled his guts. Amen. And I pray that that testimony touched you. You know, you may have not been like me and been, you know, dealing with drugs for over 15 years, or like Brother Todd. But maybe there's something else that's going on in your life. Maybe it's something going on up here. Maybe it was a past relationship or a past transgression that you say you've forgiven, but truly you know you haven't. Maybe it's that one person that you think that you forgave, but you see him at Walmart, and all of a sudden your shopping list changes. Huh? You was about to go get some bananas. They're getting bananas too. I don't need bananas. I'm going to go get some, I'm going to go get some uh, raid from the lawn and garden. You don't need no raid from the lawn and garden. You needed bananas. That's a bunch of bananas. Right? Take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. When Father says take heed, just be alert of this. You know what I love about how simple God has made it in the church, in a new covenant church? This is how God protects us. Holy Spirit, this is his house. Lord Jesus Christ owns each one of us for eternity. We're his. And this is how easy he makes it, Brother Mike. This is his church that he paid for, that he did everything that you know on that cross, and everything that he watches over. Here we are. And he made it so easy so that we could sacrifice our time to come and be uncomfortable with one another. Be transparent. I don't have it together. I never will. 
But I'll tell you right now, I will strive to keep trying. I don't sin every day. I don't. I don't. But guess what? The Bible says we all fall short, which means it's bound to happen. Amen? I'm not perfect. But I will strive to be. The same expectation goes for you. Are you striving to be the best you can every day? Or are you living life going, nah. Mm. I confess to you, on this day, I can't be around people like that. When there's no purpose in your life, when look at the purpose that Lord Jesus Christ gave us. Can I get an amen? amen. He gave us purpose to go and save souls. Go and love souls. Go be active, right? Go volunteer. You heard pastors say it so many times. Come help. We need help here. We're so blessed in such this, this amazing, amazing church. I call it the greatest church in all of this world. Why? Because you're here. Holy Spirit is here. Amen. But I can try to pump you up every day. But guess what? It's your personal conviction. Here goes Brother Joey again asking for help. <sighs> okay, watch out, boo-boo. Father hears everything. And he sees everything. And guess what? I am his and he put me here. And I'm telling you right now, God needs you and we need help. Can you say it with me? Help me, Jesus. He, he did. You're here. So help. Can I get an amen? Hey, Brother Todd, now everybody's like, man, why didn't Brother Todd just keep preaching? Why didn't Brother Todd just keep preaching? Now, now this brother's got all these rabbits on my lap. I love it. Just deal with it. You know I heard a new saying because I keep saying it. I heard somebody say, well, you get a rabbit up on your lap, deal with it. Amen. I don't even understand that yet. But I love saying it. Amen. Maybe one of y'all could help me understand that. But what is a rabbit doing around running around anyway? But I don't know. It's just cute to me. Amen. This I say then. Say it with me, walk in the spirit. It's really simple, family. When you obey God, you have this relationship, this intimacy with Lord Jesus Christ. You heard a brother spill his guts and he kept on saying, every moment where he didn't have the words to say, you heard him say it, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. It's all about Jesus. I love Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. When you walk in the spirit, in obedience this way, Father God promises that his presence, say his name, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit in you will make the change. You see, we get deceived in what religion has taught us, in how this world is programmed, that we, gosh, I need a change, I need a change, you're missing it. All Father is asking of you is, will you just come and just be with him? Will you just come and thank him? Will you just come and just tell him how much you love him? And in that, will you say, Father, I allow you to change me. I allow you to change me, Father God. Change the way I think. Change my attitudes. Change my heart. Father God, change my heart for my wife. Don't change her, change me. See, it's in that humility that Father God says, my child, I thank you. That you came in complete humility and you're asking me to change you. Not only will his glory change you and bless you, but he will bless your relationships, your marriage, your children. I promise you in Jesus' name. How many of you in such a short period of time? have experienced the anointing of Holy Spirit that you yourself, you know that you're completely different. Show of hands. And be honest with the Lord. Beloved family, look around. We're one body, look around. This is Holy Spirit's church, amen. And he's going to do it again tonight, amen. Let's all stand up, praise God. Pastor John, do you have anything to add to that? Amen. Gooder and gooder. Y'all going to gonna hear from Pastor John when we're done um, with the song and everything. Amen. Um, just bring it all to the altar. Uh,
Before we do that, let's all lift up our hands. Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in complete surrender, here I am with hands lifted high for all of your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me that I got familiar, that I got comfortable, that I got lazy. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me. Holy Spirit, I give you permission. I allow you, only you, Holy Spirit, change me to be everything you want me to be as your beloved child. In Jesus Christ's name. And all God's beloved said.